Good evening, everyone. Um, happy Saturday. Uh, my name is Katie Gideon, and I will be the camera facilitator for this weekly setup. I am dialing in from Tulsa, Oklahoma, and I want to give a huge shout out to uh, my co-facilitator in the chat, which is Bailey, who is over there in Tennessee, hanging out with us as well. Um, she is going to be rocking the chat, so if you have any questions, let her know. We'll be there, um, but really excited to set up your weekly setup for um, Saturday. I did notice that there were some issues logging in. I can absolutely commiserate with that. So I can, I just recommend make sure you have the most updated um, Zoom, uh, you know, version. Um, we, we have certainly, Bailey and I were struggling a little bit on the tech side um, as we were doing our dress rehearsal for this. So you are not alone. Um, and so provide any of that feedback there, especially when you always have issues um, logging in, we wanna hear about it. Um, but right now I can recommend there were some updates required for Zoom. I know I've had to gun through and do it. Same thing with um, Spotify, we use Spotify as well. So these are always those friendly reminders that you need to update those. Um, but we are so glad everybody is here. I see a lot of our returning socialers. Welcome back. We always love having you. Is there anyone who this is their first social or their first weekly setup? We would love to see that in the chat. Let us know um, because this is a great way to set up your week, learn a lot of kind of tips and tricks when it comes to the weekly setups. We are so excited to do it. Yes, I'm seeing a handful of first. Love it. Um, this is super fun. Um, these are great. I, I am a big become a fan of the weekly setups on Saturday night, just because I want to not think about things too heavily on Sundays because I try to do all my errands today and then relax on Sunday. Really wish I could have a third day to like do errands and do nothing and then relax from doing nothing. Um, that's where we are. Um, so as always, you make sure you can set your Zoom to chat if you want to share with the larger group for your tips, tricks, and questions. If you have questions for just the host or panelists, that comes to myself and Bailey, we'll be able to answer those. Also, if you're new, highly recommend using the Q&A feature at the bottom that lets you give like a specific question so it doesn't get lost in that chat, and you can use that as well. But other guidelines that we want to use are be kind and courteous to yourself and others, no promotions or spam. We want to respect everybody's privacy. This is a safe space because this is definitely an opportunity to um, celebrate all the highs and the lows and everything in between um, with, you know, again, no hate speech or bullying. If you have product or accessory questions, same thing with the customer care, you can reach out to the email, which will provide um, one anytime you ask and two at the end. Um, and then as always, just as a frame of mind, especially if we get to some of these like tougher themes, um, Saunders Social is a tool to help elevate your emotional health through the power of community. But at the end of the day, you're responsible for your own emotions, well-being, and decisions. So if you're having a bad day, we are glad that you're here and spending it with us. Do not feel pressured to get anything accomplished in these pages. You can be here for the camaraderie that has become the Saunders Socials. You can be here to listen to music. If you're like, Katie, you're too much for me today. You can mute me, unmute it when I go off camera and listen to music and knock out this time. It's supposed to be used for you. Um, at this time, this is a whole hour you set aside for your self-care, your self-journey in preparation for the next week, but we have great coloring pages if you want to work on those, um, but we're just glad you're here. We're glad you set this side of time for yourself, and we can't wait to get started. So here's going to be our theme. So if you're just not joining us, we haven't started our first exercise. That first exercise is going to be the acceptance mind map, which week one, a little bit on the brutal side um, for me. and we're gonna you know, kind of times that a little bit as well because acceptance for me is gonna be tricky, but also the themes we've got are really gonna be worthwhile to dig in to the point I was on the fence about the mind maps in general, but they have become such a staple. I love them. I think it is an excellent opportunity to really dig into the theme as we focus on specific categories. Then we get to do the ever lovely Rosebud Thorn, which is the celebration and the acknowledgement of the good, the bad, and everything in between from this last week. Then we'll move into the weekly setup. So for this month's theme, um, it is acceptance. So we went from loyalty in June to acceptance, which I think the self-loyalty really goes hand in hand with the self-acceptance. Um, and as I had kind of mentioned in one of the prompts that I, that I facilitated um, last week was for me, I feel like I 
throw out acceptance, almost a little like candy, where it's just kind of that flippant response, you know, right up there with almost like fine. When someone asks you how you're going, you're really upset. So you just say fine. For me, it's more of I've reached it as so the acceptance is like, yeah, I got it. I accept it. That's fine. Moving on. Whereas I think I have to have a little bit, you know, go back to more of that true definitive um, definition of acceptance, where am I truly accepting it? Or am I just pushing it to the side because I don't want to address it now and it's going to pop up, you know, and rear some sort of ugly version of itself in the future. Um, so that is kind of what I am working on. I know it's going to be a little tricky, but I do appreciate the mind map that we're doing. So I know that there are, you know, themes that really embrace that you love that are just so inherently you. There are ones that are definitely challenging and tricky. So we definitely have that wide array of options. So if you feel a little lost, you can always go back to the definition. If the definition doesn't work for you, you can always go to synonyms. Um, synonyms are great. Um, so don't feel like you have to embrace it in this. And just because you're maybe doing it a little bit differently, doesn't make it wrong. Um, this is actually kind of your journal, your way, your journey. So please share if you repurpose it, if you love it, if you don't like it, if you need it, if you don't need it, we want to hear it because we want to embrace all of these because I guarantee you there is somebody else out there that is probably feeling that as well. So go ahead and if you haven't started the mind map, we do this on a blank page or in kind of a blank section of the notebook. So if, uh, make sure you have your July journal. Um, you can use the scratch pad. You can use a blank page for these. Um, I know other people have repurposed like the to-do list um, or the shopping list. You know, you can basically plug this anywhere. Um, but if you're joining us for the first time, we do this mind map where we embrace the theme of the month and each week there is a different focal point um, in each of those weeks. So for the month of July, we have four different weekends. There we have four different focus points around acceptance. And are you ready for week two? Buckle up. Because first week one, self-acceptance. What things do I need to accept about my current self? Week two. Now we're gonna talk about accepting my past. So what things do I need to accept about my past? So like I said, we're coming in hot with both of these, um, but I think it's completely valuable to not only look at this and acknowledge it, but also look and be able to see and acknowledge um, some of the work that maybe you still need to do, the work that you've done. Um, it's, it's a wide gamut. And again, you can set your own boundaries. This is something that you just need to pick up tomorrow. You have all week to kind of embrace this week two theme, um, but definitely, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna flow through the past. Um, again, here's some framing reference. Here we actually have an example. This is this is Bailey's example. She so graciously shared. Uh, but this is the format that she has used. We have the kind of theme in the middle, and then you've got week one, which was self. Week two of the past, and then we've got the blank three for week three, week four. There are no right or wrong ways to kind of accept this. And at the same time, do not beat yourself up over this. This is an opportunity to, if you need to set up some of those mental barriers of just, I don't want to touch that. I want to accept a couple other things, you know, treat it as instead of like going cannonball into the swimming pool, maybe you just need to kind of dip a toe or stand on the stairs until we do this. Um, but you should never leave upset or um, triggered in any way, shape or form. But this is an opportunity to ask that deep question and give yourself permission to just start writing or just start brainstorming or close your eyes and kind of think on it. Um, but yeah, coming in, coming in with week two as well. So week one was self under self-acceptance. Week two, we are now accepting our past. I'm gonna turn on some music, stop talking and I will check back in.
Thank you everyone for being so open, so honest and sharing with everybody. I appreciate all that was shared. Um, I know, isn't Bailey a wonderful, wonderful person? Um, I'm super excited that I always get to share um, these type of events with her. I have learned so much for her and I think it's amazing. My reflection on my past is that I would always kind of tongue in cheek reply to the kind of my path to where I am now was a little bit of a detour, took a detour. Um, and I really need to stop that. It's, it's, it wasn't a detour when, when it was 10 years worth. And so I need to accept that the detour was actually what was meant to be. I need to embrace it in its full weird quirkiness and no longer, um, you know, give it the support it deserves. Um, so I know this was definitely a tough one uh, <laughs> to spend on a Saturday night, but as Mary put it, this is a gift. The fact that we can all sit here together with like-minded individuals just to provide support, just the acknowledgement, because sometimes it is just that release of being able to say it out loud, write it down, power of pen to paper, just to put it out there and acknowledge, because part of that is self-forgiveness, the acknowledgement, you know, the first step to acknowledgement and acceptance. Um, so like I said, I think the mind maps are just going to get me each week. So I am excited to be able to continue this mind map journey with all of you here. But like I said, this one kind of definitely comes with a little bit more force than I think some of the ones that in, in my opinion in the past, but I think it's great. It's amazing. 
glad to share everything with you. So now we're going to move on to our next um, topic, which is Rosebud Thorn, which is a wonderful staple. And again, I think it's more of that, um, it kind of goes hand in hand with some of the acceptance, accepting the type of week that you had. Um, so if you are in your July journal, we are on page 36 at the bottom. So Rose is where we get to celebrate um, something well, a highlight, something that made us happy, something that made us smile. Um, this week, um, the bud is an emerging opportunity, something we're excited about, something we're, um, you know, we have a possibility for, something we can really embrace in the optimism. And then the thorn, um, which again, the good, the good always comes in hand in hand with the, the not so good. Um, so it's an opportunity to acknowledge a challenge, something that didn't go so well, something that didn't go our way, something that is bothering us. Um, so for me this week, the rose, um, I actually went and got my hair cut and colored by um, the hairdresser um, from Oklahoma that I love. She has been doing my hair since I was a kid and I haven't seen her in years. So it was super fun to do that. The bud. I'm just excited that I'm knocking more stuff off of my kind of long to-do list and the checklist and all those things. So it's still that kind of built up excitement of getting things accomplished, planning and scheduling and all those things. Um, and, and Thorn, it's hot. I'm not used to it being hot and work. Clients, clients are, are trying my patience because I work kind of customer service consulting -y. So they're just trying my patience and when it's hot, and trying my patience, I am probably not an extremely pleasant individual. Um, so I acknowledge that. So my thorn is not only was I not a happy camper sometimes, but I was probably taking that out on other people. So I guarantee you, I was probably someone else's thorn this week. Um, so I'm gonna give you guys an opportunity to throw out your rosebud thorns um, and we will see you in a minute.
Thank you everyone for sharing your rose bud thorns. Um, I know it can certainly be a little tricky to kind of lurk back on the week because um, I am one that likes to dwell on the negative. So I certainly have a hard time finding roses. Um, but I will say I have made an extra effort into like kind of making those notes. I use the one thing on the weekly spread or I have uh, transformed my mind body health plan into something I did well that week um, so that I'm able to track it each day when I just know I'm gonna have either a busy week or I'm just mentally and emotionally a little on the drain side. And I just need that kind of optimistic pep talk um, to get me through. Um, so thank you everyone. Um, we find this just a really valuable tool to be able to look at the rosebud thorns because we can celebrate what we did well um, and maybe hone in on something that was a challenge or didn't go well to see if we can maybe make some small tweaks um, to our weekly setup. But with that being said, the main event, why we are here in the weekly planner. So please join me in your July journal. We are on page 40. We are setting up week 28, which is, can you believe it's week 28? Um, I can't, but we are on the full week two of July. But again, page 40 in your July journal. And so we're going to start at the top with this week I want to feel. <clears throat> The way um, I always like to approach this one is how do I want to feel this time next week? So that can be a word, a phrase, an affirmation, a song lyric, something that you need um, to get you to this time next week. What it can be that mantra, what can be that focal point? How do you want to feel at the end of this week? Um, here are some examples here. We've got ample words. Um, I know we have folks that use kind of a different word for a different day, um, multiple words, multiple days. Um, but I always like to treat this as this is this is my grounding point of how I'm going to set up my other pieces. You don't need to do that. You can absolutely treat each of these as almost like separate, um, separate, separate areas, separate in um, uh, components. Um, but what I have just found a little bit more on my success and my journey is kind of connecting all those pieces together. So for this week, I want to feel, I want to feel um, more connected um, just because I feel like everything has been kind of very scattered. So I need to connect all those pieces back together so that I have a full day instead of just these weird, like splotchy pieces. Um, I'm going to give you guys some time to brief time to this. So throw out those words, throw out that motivation of how you want to feel this time next week.
Thank you everyone for sharing those um, optimistic words. I feel like that's what I love kind of as we kind of, you know, you go the rosebud thorns, you get the highs and the lows, and then we start building the excitement and the optimism and the hope for what this week is to come. And so I always love that transition, um, but I love seeing uh, folks happy, some folks headed on vacation, seeing some folks that were on the productive side because um, they want to do some cleaning and some organizing. Um, and then Stacey just put hopeful and determined, um, feel content, all of these things are great and powerful. So now that we have this kind of word or phrase or affirmation that we want to use for the week, we are going to now move into our weekly to-dos. So again, we're still on page 40 in your July journal, and now we're moving into those two squares. Um, I am going to talk about the weekly to-dos and the weekly major three goals. Um, you can continue to do them separately in that traditional form. I like to kind of do them hand in hand um, because as we talk to the weekly to-dos, this can be absolutely your traditional to-do list. Um, I have been in the to-da camp um, and you're like, Katie, the difference between the to-do and the to-da, it's all about attitude. Um, the to-dos are things I do, the to-das are the things that I get to celebrate that I have done. Um, and sometimes for me, I need a little celebration. So it's just that feeling of accomplishment and celebration. Couldn't tell I was a competitive type A person as, as, as a child. So any shy way I can strive to get that kind of blue ribbon, um, I will do so and I will celebrate. Um, we also have other great operational tools, the Eisenhower Matrix, which is in that top left, where you do the do, decide, um, delete, and delegate. Um, we have other folks that, again, they use it kind of um, in conjunction with the calendar to track um, appointments and some of those important things. Um, we have folks that kind of do it in slightly different categories. The ever popular bingo boards are there. Um, we've also seen kind of more on the product productivity hats, the need, the want, the hope um, style to-do list. Um, the same thing with the Pomodoro method. I've actually realized that I was kind of practicing the Pomodoro method. If you have a lot of things that I feel like gets carried over from week to week, you basically set a timer for any disclosed amount of time and you do one task within that time. Once that timer goes off, you can take a break. So then you set yourself up to do so many Pomodors, which is the timed um, task break time task again. So if you want to accomplish four to five Pomodors in a day, um, I think it's a great, a, a great tool. I've heard it works well for those um, that um, have issues with uh, ADHD or any of those. So I know it's been a very productive tool. I find it really great. And I know it's definitely when those days that I just don't think I'm going to be able to tackle anything, it's been helpful. And so again, this is that to do's. So let us know if you repurpose the to do's um, because we love to hear those. And then on the other side, um, so straight across the weekly major three goals, um, I like to then feed these back up to how I wanna feel um, by this time next week, what major goals are gonna get me there and what to-do lists do I need to do? If I've got a long list of to-dos, it's a focal point. Um, but again, for these type of weekly major three goals, I approach it from a emotional or like a mentality that I need to have. So it's, you know, remove myself from the unimportant, um, hydrate, um, get rest, complete your day. So they tend to be, for me, a little bit more on that open-ended. What do I need to do to feel this way? What do I need to do to accomplish this? And what are the friendly reminders that I need to give myself when it is like, you know, midnight on Wednesday and I'm just kind of slightly panicking because I still have a ton of stuff that I need to accomplish. Um, so there are no right or wrong ways to approach these. And at the end of the day, you don't need to always have three. Maybe it's two, maybe it's one, maybe it's no goals, maybe it's really fun stickers or anything to motivate. Um, but as I have found um, through my journey is that connecting these pieces together grounds it a little bit more. So I always have kind of that end goal for the week. Um, and then again, share any of your goals. We wanna help you celebrate and get to those goals. Same thing with how do you repurpose these? But again, we're working on page 40 in your July journal the weekly to-dos and the weekly three major goals. And I will check back in.
Thank you everyone for sharing. Um, and I loved seeing a lot of the repurposing, but I then wanted to bring the attention is that um, we had someone that was kind of working in one direction and then decided to kind of mix it up, change it the following week and found that there was success there as well. Um, and I think that's what I really like about being able to start each week new because you can try something, you can make adjustments if it starts to get a little stale or you're feeling a little less productive. So the opportunity to embrace each week in a different mindset, new mindset, starting over, trying a different method, as well as joining the socials where you can get great ideas. You guys have great ideas. We like to share those ideas and then being able to kind of use and make modifications and tweak based on the week that you're going to have, the week you think you need or the week you want to have. Um, you know, it's got all the possibilities there. So we are now moving on to the habit and activity uh, section. So that is still at the bottom. Um, we're now on, still on page 40 at the bottom of it. And so this is the habit and activity tracker. Um, so you can absolutely bring some of those habits that you have on the monthly tracker, habit tracker. Um, the kind of way that we kind of describe this is so your monthly um, habits are things that you want to do every single day. Um, the way I then treat my weekly habit tracker is I call it the reality lens um, because uh, I am I don't like to run in the rain. I don't like to work out when it's super, super hot. I don't like to do those things. So if I know that that's what the weather's gonna look like, I will modify you know, my movement each day for that. Um, same thing with, I know I'm gonna have a really busy week. I may um, you know, only expect to do so many of those things each day based on those. Um, but what I then also like is that you can have um, you know, the five different areas, but if the five don't, areas don't work for you, you can have four, you can have three, you can two, you can even have one. Um, you know, there are no rules, there are no responsibilities, it's exactly what you need. And if you just aren't going to be in a tracking mood because you're on vacation or you want to spend a little bit of time with your family, um, it can be stickers. Um, exactly, no, no, how you put in there. You don't have to have any. Um, it's just going to be kind of the speaking that you have. You don't even have to set goals. Um, some people do kind of a five, four, three, two, one method, um, but you don't have to have goals. You just be like, this is what I want to do. You can also focus on, maybe you just want you to focus on your morning routine or just focus on the five, maybe five things you want to do in your evening routine. The flexibility is there and there are no rules here. You do what you need in order to kind of accomplish again, go back to what activities or habits you need to have to accomplish those weekly major goals that you want, or even go back to the monthly major goals that Mary pointed out um, in the chat. Um, same thing with how you're going to accomplish your to-do list to all come back to that magical word of how you want to feel this time next week. Um, so that's kind of how I connect all these pieces together, but you don't have to do that. You can be like, Katie, that doesn't work for me. I just want to do this and I want to do this and I want to do this. Excellent. That is your journal and that is your journey. And we're here to support that. So let us know um, if you have any questions, how you use your trackers um, or how you set these up. Uh, if it's like, a, again, a mindset or a productivity hack, we wanna hear it, we'll see you soon.
Thank you everyone for sharing. Um, and I, what you guys put in the chat is absolutely so true. This should not be another to-do list. This should not be another, you know, if that, if that tracker tool doesn't work for you, you don't need to use it that way. If that tracker tool speaks to you, embrace it wholeheartedly. Um, but then I saw that someone was feeling kind of just, it wasn't, it wasn't helping them on their self-care journey. So they were going to write a um, affirmation, a positive quote, all of those things. This is designed to be what you need to get through your week, work through your week, as well as then move in on the overlay of the months, those type of things. Um, so this is your permission that if uh, something's not going to work for you, you don't have to do it. No one's going to grade it. No one's turning it in. No one's looking over your shoulder, which I know that can be a little bit tricky to accept, but um, I think it's one of those, these tools are here to help, but it should never be something that is inhibiting um, or something that you stress out about or something that just adds to, you know, anxiety, stress, any of those things. Um, it's supposed to be a tool that can be helpful when you need it to be helpful which is now we're gonna move into page 41, which now I lovingly refer to this as the B side. Um, and it's not it's not any sort of degradation. It's just, I treat it as the B side of a record. Um, there are some really hidden gems on here when I need them, but for the most part, I may not fill out this page and I am okay with that um, because I, I love a good template. I am a sucker for a good template. These are great templates um, with what you need, but we find that a lot of these do get repurposed. Um, but as I said, if you were to flip through a lot of my journals, this page probably isn't really filled out often enough and I am okay with that. But the meal plan is here. It can absolutely be used for the traditional sense, the food tracker, um, the um, you know real-time meal planner, um, if that is what works for you. Um, it can be done in real time. I have used it in real time. I have an autoimmune disease, so I needed to track um, intake for symptoms. It can be used for the GLAD, which is gratitude, learning, accomplishment, and delight for things that fell into those categories. You can use it for a reflections page for the journal side of the house. You can use it for meal ideas. You can use it for the affirmations that you can get in the app. I have also used it as a wardrobe planner when I travel for work and I want to kind of repurpose shoes. Can't pack a million shoes, can only pack one or two. So I want to repurpose them with everything that I need. So that's why I said this is a, an amazing template for what you need it to be when you need it but do not feel bad if you don't have something for that week, or it's always something that you can try. Take that washi tape, cover it up, um, and use that for it. And so still kind of in the same line of repurposing, we are now still on page 41. And this is the mind body health plan, which is now in that top right hand corner. Um, so these can be used again, something that you can kind of plan for. So maybe this is where you put your Sonder social schedule if you're attending those. Maybe this is where you put your workout plans. Um, I know some people will put their meal planning here because they use their meal plan for something else. Um, you can also use it for a good bingo board. Um, you can also use it to track maybe the seven types of rest, which are physical, mental, sensory, creative, emotional, social, and spiritual. Each of those, something that you need. Um, I am also a fan of the T chart, which is the line down the middle. So you got two columns. Um, and so this particular individual was I feel and I need, um, or you can just use it as again, a check-in. So that's a, you know, you wanna reach out to someone, you wanna do something. It can be any of those daily intentions or motivations. Um, and then moving down this page in the shopping list, another great box for all the things to be repurposed. It can be used as a shopping list. I know one of our facilitators uses it to kind of something that maybe they want, but they haven't decided what they want to do to kind of curb some of that um, spontaneous spending. Um, you can use it to focus on routines, another great place for a bingo board. Um, you can also use it for appointments, affirmations, um, uh, the prayer lists, uh, any of those things. So it's certainly a great repurposing. Um, so I'm going to give you guys some time to work on, like I said, I lovingly refer to it as the B side, um, but uh, you can definitely share some of your repurposing ideas, how you want to do it, how you want to embrace it, or even just how you feel about this page. Um, I will stop talking, give you guys some music, and we'll see you in a minute.
Thank you everyone for sharing. I love seeing all of the repurposing, all the different approaches. Um, and also I think it's been fun to share some of the inspiration that you've received from some of these socials. Um, but can you believe it or not? We have actually reached the end. Um, I feel like the hour goes by so quickly. Um, but thank you everybody for sharing. I am super excited that you took this time to yourself, especially on a Saturday night. But what a great way to um, set up our week. Um, here is a slide of my playlist. I'll also share the link. Um, and then here are our um, other links. Um, if you're not a part of the Silicon Sonder app, we would love you to join you, us there so we can continue the conversation. As always, we love to see everybody's pages, everybody's approaches. We certainly enjoy seeing them each month, but you are not required to share any of those things. It is absolutely your journal. Um, and then we do have the QR codes here um, and Bailey's gonna start throwing some of those in the chat um, because please fill out the survey. We read all of them. That is why we have a Saturday night social now. That's why we have more weekly setups. Um, different times, different arranges. So if there's something that you want, there's something that you need, there's something else you want to see differently, let us know. We read everything. And then if you show up late um, or have to leave early or just miss a day or find a day where you really, really need a social and there isn't one on the schedule, Bailey's going to throw in the YouTube link. It is unsearchable. But now we have, I think, um, last time we saw like over 150 different socials. So you can see all the weekly setups, all the monthly setups, as well as some of those journal prompts. When you just need one of those, any of those things that you need, it is there on demand for you to review. Um, it will just be the facilitator and the slides. Sometimes the music isn't included if it's copyrighted and there is no chat, which is unfortunate. Um, but it is at least that there opportunity for you to be there um, and do it. And so it's always great to have. But Thank you again, everyone, for joining us, for being so open and honest at the beginning um, with that uh, embracing the theme of acceptance. We will see everybody at another event. Thank you so much. Have a great Saturday night and have a great rest of your weekend. You're going to do a fantastic this week, and we will see you next time. Thank you. Outstanding, now you're feeling so alive.